Greetings, Summoners, and welcome to another episode of the Summoner's Manual. In this episode, we'll be covering the jungle. The jungle is divided into two areas per team, one side containing the red or lizard buff, and the other containing the blue or golem buff. Each side has camps of monsters that can be farmed for gold and experience. The red side has a golem camp containing two golems, a wraith camp containing three small wraiths and one big wraith, and the lizard elder with two smaller lizards guarding him. The blue side has a wolf camp containing two small wolves and one big wolf, and the ancient golem with two small lizards guarding him. An important thing to note are the entrances and exits of the jungle, as they can be the key to any gank, as well as defending yourself from ganks. We will also feature the dragon and Baron Nasher in this video, located here and here in the river. A jungler is an important part of any League of Legends match. By having one person in the jungle, it maximizes the amount of experience and gold your team can get on your side of the map, and gives the enemy team the constant threat of a gank if they push too hard in their lanes. Normally, when using a jungler, you will use only one person in the top lane, where they can have all the last hits and experience to themselves. Not every champion is meant for jungling, as there are certain things junglers need to be effective in the game. A gap closer and a crowd control are very essential. These allow you to have strong ganking potential, as we know, ganks give your team a strong advantage in the laning phase. There are several different ways to build runes for your jungle champions, each being a little different. The main runes you will want are attack speed and damage, as this will help you clear the jungle faster and having more impact on the match. Armor also helps as a lot of the damage from the creeps in the jungle is physical. Masteries are a bit more strict depending on your champion, wanting to maximize the physical damage you do with a 2109 build or your ability to support your team with a 9021 build. An essential thing for every jungler is to take the Smite Summoner spell, as it makes jungling much easier and helps you secure Baron and Dragon kills. The Smite Mastery gives you 5 gold every time you use it, so make sure to use it whenever it comes off cooldown. Another important mastery is the experience boost in Utility, as it will keep your level as high as the duo lane. Being in the jungle is only a small part of a jungler's role in a match, as ganks and lane presence are most beneficial to your team. The toughest part of your game is going to be your start in the jungle. There are several different paths you can take to clear your jungle, flee ganks or invasions of the enemy jungle. Something that will help every jungler out is a leash. A leash is when another member hits a creep in a camp and runs away, outside of experience range. This gives you a chance to attack the creep without it attacking you, making your first camp kill much easier. Defeating the ancient golem will grant you a blue buff, and defeating the lizard elder will grant you a red buff. If slain, these buffs will transfer to the killer. The creeps in these camps spawn at a minute 55 after the game starts and respawn every 5 minutes once every creep in the camp is defeated. Here we see Warwick starting at the golem camp, then going to the wraith camp, then the wolf camp, then the blue buff camp. After heading back to base, he heads straight to the red buff camp and is primed for ganking. We see Nocturne, our jungler, intends to get the blue buff as his first camp. He has Garen fight the wolves for him, having them attack him, not Nocturne, saving Nocturne a potion, clearing the whole camp, dividing the XP between the two of them, and giving a little gold. They took out this camp first as it spawns at 140, while the blue camp spawns at 155, maximizing their early game time. Now at the blue camp, Garen hits the ancient golem and runs away, avoiding stealing XP. Nocturne gets free hits in and finishes off the camp with ease. When fighting the jungle camps, be sure to attack the largest creep at the camp first, as they do the most damage. The dragon is a mighty creature that grants your entire team 190 gold and 25 to the person who delivers the killing blow, in addition to some experience. While fighting him, he will debuff the person he is attacking, slowing their attack speed and causing damage over time. The dragon spawns at 2 minutes and 30 seconds after the game has started, and respawns every 6 minutes once he is killed. Baron Nasher is the toughest creep on the map, having almost 9,000 health and gaining 125 health every minute after he spawns. 
When fighting Baron Nasher, he will attack the person closest to him, giving them a debuff that drastically reduces their attack damage. In addition, he vomits acid, giving a stacking debuff to those it hits, increasing the magic damage they take. Defeating Baron will give your team 300 gold and 900 experience, as well as a purple buff. Nasher spawns 15 minutes after the game starts, and 7 minutes every time he is defeated. The main role of an early jungler is ganking. Ganks are best performed when a lane is pushed past the river, giving you a chance to ambush the enemy from behind and cut off their escape route. If your team is properly going only for last hits in their lane, it should not be pushed past the river. Be sure to keep an eye on your minimap for when the enemy team may be getting aggressive, giving you a strong opportunity to gank. Having your team to monitor use of summoner spells of the enemy and let you know if they are on cooldown will help you gank more effectively. You won't always have an easy gank. Try not to be too greedy for these ganks, and avoid tower diving at least until level 6. But it is still important to have lane presence. Just walking past a lane or poking at a champ and doing some damage to minion waves can help your team and make the enemy team think twice before going for a kill. Be sure to cover a lane for your team if the minion wave is pushed too far and the laner isn't there. Covering their lane could give them an opportunity to gank on their own, or go back to base and buy and heal up. That's it for this episode. Stay tuned for the next episode of the Summoner's Manual. Please remember to subscribe. You can play League of Legends for free by following the link in the description below, or going to their website at www.leagueoflegends.com. If you have any questions about the game, feel free to email us at gungholol at or go to our thread in the League of Legends forums in the description below.